Hello everyone and welcome to the second pre-recorded video of uh, 20th November 2020 uh, and we are discussing the chapter uh, geothermics and today we are going to discuss around geothermal energy. So sources of the earth's internal energy we discussed a little bit about this in the earlier video but we will we will see what it is so 70 percent of it comes from the decay of radioactive nuclei with long half lives that are embedded within the earth okay so major source of the heat is by the radioactive decay some energy is from the residual heat over the earth's formation as you know earth had a very high temperature when it formed and then it is slowly decreasing its temperature because it wants to come back to, equi to equilibrium how why it wants to come back to equilibrium and how it comes back to equilibrium <clears throat> we discussed them in the last video i hope you remember them and the rest of the energy comes from meteoritic impact so we want to use that particular heat energy of the earth for our own purposes so that brings us to the discussion of different geothermal energy sources. So first ones are the hot water reservoirs. As the name implies, these are the reservoirs of hot underground water. There is large amount of them in the US, but they are more suited for space heating and than for electricity production. So the idea is we are trying to uh, cultivate these, uh, these uh, geothermal sources and try to form electricity from them how we will discuss later so the first category is hot water reservoir there are some reservoirs which has uh, of under, hot underground water not very deep uh, but they are uh, they don't have enough potential to form electricity they're mostly used to actually uh, heat up the um, heat up the houses now natural steam reservoir another type of reservoir in this case, uh, a hole is dug into the ground that can cause steam to come to the surface. This type of resources is rare in the US. Okay, uh, So the geothermal is mostly developed in the US. So most of the references are coming from US as well. Okay, So but it's not uh, very much there in, the, there in India. I think one or two demonstration project that has happened, and that's about it. So most of the references you will find from US and the Europe. Okay. So natural steam reservoir. Uh, sorry, this is not steam. This will be steam. Okay. This is natural steam. So what it essentially means that you will uh, uh, from those there are some hot reservoirs from where steam actually comes out, which is immediately below the ground. So you can dig a small hole and actually use that steam for your for your work. Now, geopressure reservoir are generally the high pressure reservoir or the overpressure reservoir. We talked about overpressure reservoir uh, in uh, during the stress discussion. So these are the same overpressure reservoir. In this type of reserve brine, which is like a salt saturated water. Completely uh, can be completely saturated with natural gas stored under pressure from the weight of the overlying rock. This type of resources can be used for both heat and for natural gas. Now, normal geothermal gradient, as we say, at any place of the planet, there is a normal geothermal gradient is around 30 degrees centigrade uh, per kilometer. Therefore, if one digs 20,000 feet, the temperature will be 190 degrees centigrade above the surface temperature. This difference will be enough to produce electricity. So you have to dig with the normal geothermal gradient, you have to dig around 20,000 foot. And that temperature difference between the surface and the and the and the underneath will be enough to actually create electricity. But then, of course, if I have a that will be no useful and uh, will be uneconomic as well okay so that will not be a very viable idea so you have to if you want to harvest on uh, geothermal energy you have to actually harvest in an area where the 
geothermal gradients are steeper okay but the cost is perhaps a little bit shallow and or i have a like a, a nearby heat source uh, which is uh, emitting a lot of uh, radiation say for example i have a granitic pluton immediately beneath the um, top part of the crust and that uh, can uh, actually supply additional heat energy and <clears throat> um, the geothermal gradient can be steeper and that geothermal gradient can be uh, such steep geothermal gradient can be used for geothermal energy now hot dry rock this type of condition exists 5% in the us it is similar to the normal geothermal gradient but the gradient is around 40 degree centigrade per kilometer fault in magma no technology exists to tap the heat reserves uh, in the in the in the magma the best sources for this in the us are in alaska and in hawaii so how geothermal heat energy is used so direct use of geothermal energy is appropriate for sources below 150 degrees centigrade it can be used for space heating air conditioning industrial purposes drying greenhouses this even see this is greenhouse which is he heated by a geothermal uh, heated by geothermal uh, energy aquaculture you can see there are these are uh, this is a fish farm where the temperature is elevated so that these fishes can survive maybe some exotic fishes can survive because the outside temperature can be very cold uh, and you keep the water warmer for these uh, fishes to survive and that uh, you do um, essentially by the um, geothermal energy you can use them in resorts and pools where you know people do enjoy uh, taking a bath in a in a hot pool and of course you can use it for melting snow so how direct uses work direct sources function by sending water down uh, a well to be heated by the earth's warmth so this is very simple that you actually drill a shallow well and through which you pump some water when that water goes down it gets heated up by the uh, internal energy of the earth i mean because the earth inside is hotter so and then with another well you take the water out the water that you have pumped in you take the water out and while it is going through that beautiful uh, uh, artesian well and being in touch with uh, the hotter inside of the earth the water that comes out is 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 hotter right it's hotter than the uh, the water that you have sent so what you are gaining essentially you are gaining the heat energy and that heat energy can be used for many different purposes either you can directly use that hot water for any of your purposes that i have just described or you can extract the heat from that hot water and run a turbine and create electricity so then a heat pump is used to take the heat from the underground water uh, substance that heats the house then after the water is cooled and injected back in, into the earth okay. so this is uh, a beautiful borehole exchange borehole heat exchanger ground heat collectors this system uses horizon so this is <coughs> like the floor heating of a house remember if you are living in europe or in the us and if your house has floor heating, that means the generally you have wall heating, you know, that there is like some heaters and that it heats your house. It's really nice. But then if you have floor heating, that means you are really, really rich. To install this system, it takes a lot of money. That means hot water actually runs beneath the house, beneath the floor. Okay. And that keeps the temperature a little bit um, elevated. And when the outside is like minus 15, minus 20 degrees centigrade, you like to warm, uh, walk on a floor which is slightly warm, you know. It's a luxury, okay. So uh, uh, the idea is that there is, a, there is a well, there is a pipeline, that pipeline, that well actually goes uh, in, the, in, the, in the subsurface for some depth. <laughs> And through the through a pump, you essentially uh, put hot, um, sorry, cold water through it. It goes down, 
and it gets heated up because of the temperature difference of the surface and beneath and the hot water comes up and that hot water is actually circled through your floor and then when you know it loses the heat in this process and the cold water is again pumped back and the hot water comes up okay so this is what we what we call as bore or heat exchange and this is used typically for uh, space heating as i said okay now the generation of electricity only happens at this temperature which comes up as a temperature of more than 150 degrees centigrade okay so what you can do in this particular particular thing there are different types of things that can happen so the first one is dry steam plant these are these were the first type of plants that were created they use the underground steam directly to the turbine okay so here instead of water the underground water is so hot that the steam comes out you know you can see dry natural streams of water vapor coming out from underground you can actually take them out in a controlled way and that steam can actually rotate your turbine and you can create electricity the water which is created after this process is actually pumped back into the ground these are called dry steam plants dry steam plants now flash steam plants what happens in flash steam plants in this particular case is the uh, temperature the it's not steam that comes up what comes up is essentially your hot water then that hot water actually is streamed through through some nozzles in high pressure and that because of the pressure release it creates water vapor that water vapor runs the turbine and you know the the uh, the, the cold water that is formed as a product of this exchange uh, is pumped back inside the ground now then binary cycle plants what happens in binary cycle plants there is an heat exchanger so here i have water okay, which is perhaps uh, perhaps cannot generate st steam uh, by the process that i have mentioned uh, in the previous slide so what you essentially put you put a fluid here which has a lower boiling point okay which is the lower boiling point so when so the this is the water pipeline and this is the uh, pipeline for a fluid which has lower boiling point and there is a heat exchange happening and that heat exchange what it what it does it can actually create steam in the uh, in the lower boiling point fluid so you are not directly using the water but you are taking the water into your taking the heat of the water into your low boiling fluid low boiling point fluid material that is creating the steam and rotating the turbine okay now hot dry rocks what happens in hot dry rocks so say for example here i have uh, i have a source which is um, say for example i have a fractured granite and you know granite has a lot of uh, radioactive material so it is a heat source because it continuously emits uh, does radioactive decay so what you do you essentially uh, pump cold water inside into the fracture system of that uh, hot dry rock you know and the the water actually percolates through the porosity and permeability of the hot dry rock be there for some time gets heated up and with other wells you actually take up the uh, hot water and then that hot water can be used in a heat exchange and be used for electricity generation or heating your uh, private spaces okay. so what are the harmful harmful effects of geothermal energy <clears throat> it's actually very clean form of energy there is no uh, carbon dioxide emission okay so it's absolutely no combustion that is required so it, the carbon footprint is absolutely very small so which is a very good news okay now <clears throat> what are the harmful effects what are the limitations brine can salinate the soil uh, if the water is not injected back in the reservoir after the heat is extracted extracting large amount of water can cause land subsidence because you are doing some sort of 
pressure imbalance as well that happens in oil and gas uh, explo um, exploitation as well and this can lead to the increase in seismic activity although small scale to prevent uh, to prevent it uh, prevent this cooled water must be injected back in the reservoir to keep the water pressure constant underground okay power plants that do not inject cooled water back into the ground can release h2s because often these hot springs have h2s dissolved into them okay um or the rotten egg gas h2s has a very bad smell hence it is called rotten egg gas this gas can cause problem if large quantities escape because of inhaling can be fatal okay one well blew its top 10 years after it was built and these threw thousands tons of rocks muds steams into the atmosphere but such incidents only happen once in a blue moon uh, there is a fear of noise pollution while drilling the wells well that happens everywhere now what are the positive attributes useful minerals such as zinc silica can be extracted from the underground water as a byproduct geothermal energy is homegrown this would create job better global trading position less reliance on oil producing countries us geothermal companies have signed 6 billion worth of contracts to build plants in foreign countries in the past couple of years in large plants it costs 4 to 8 cents per kilo out of watt of water the cost is almost competitive with conventional energy resources the most important thing is of course it is clean source of energy you know uh, it doesn't really emit a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere hence it is extremely promising okay so <clears throat> you can see where geothermal energy actually sits this is uh, gas coal wood natural gas turbine natural gas steam turbine natural gas so these are different ways how electricity is actually formed you know electricity is generated and you can see the amount of uh, pounds of co2 per kilowatt hour how minimalistic it is from geothermal sources okay it's also uh, the different type of um, other stuff which is thrown in the atmosphere it's also very little polluting so that the red bar indicates from oil field the central heating and the electricity powered by heat pump okay so it's really really the moral of the story it's absolutely environment friendly so these are places where geothermal has geothermal potential of course uh, you see in india it's just you know in the in the some some places in the northeast and this is most mostly because people have not explored it properly as yet you can see us europe is really ahead uh, <clears throat> yeah. in australia as well there are some places where uh, geothermal is taken very seriously okay so this is uh, the amount of um, this is the different countries which are involved in geothermal resources and you can see the amount of electricity that they essentially generate for geothermal resources so a uh, moral of the story geothermal resources is something which is coming up uh, it will not essentially be a really huge um, source of energy but then of course it is extremely clean and um, yeah will be will be beneficial in future Okay, thank you very much. So I will answer any questions that you might have on uh, the next class, which will be on Wednesday. Thank you very much.